Okay, welcome back to HP Discover live in Las Vegas where all the action is three days of, of activity here at HP Discover. This is SiliconANGLE and Wiki Bonds. The Cubes, go to siliconangle.com for all the breaking news, analysis, commentary. It's a, it's a reference point for tech innovation. Go to wikibon.org and that's where you get the free research. We are open source content, it's all free. You don't have to pay for it. Go to Wikibon if you want to see what IDC has behind the firewall. We have that before they do. And Gartner, it's all going to be there. Uh, I'm John Furrier, I'm joined Jeff Kelly from Wikibon here at uh, HP Discover with Greg Batta, CTO of the new group of uh, business intelligence of HP Converged Systems. You're part of the new group that Dave Donatelli was just referring to. To mm -hmm. off camera that now headed up by SVP Tom Joyce. Right. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thanks, I appreciate so it. So tell us about the new group first, and we're just going to get our arms around that. Then we can talk about some really cool software, big data meets infrastructure, um, and talk about things like infrastructure as code. We won't get into the hardware speeds and fees, but we'll talk about the That's future good. of software. So first give us the package yeah. of Converged Systems Group. Well, so I think, you know, everybody's probably got their own take on it, but I mean, I think one of the things that you struggle with when you organize a company is, do you organize kind of by product line or do you organize by program or do you, and Converge Infrastructure is one of those things that, you know, it, it in the past had kind of been a program that was made up of a lot of products that came from different parts of the company. Um, and, and it really became clear, we need to get a lot more synergy, I think, around that. So um, this new organization will kind of bring together under one roof everybody who's focused on our Converge Infrastructure programs. And a lot of that, uh, is centered around uh, the, the manageability infrastructure that kind of makes all these pieces and parts play together. So we have a big software development organization. So that's within the enterprise group, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, now I know that SAR ran something similar in the cloud, is that similar, is he related to this group or yeah, is it no, a different this, group? This is, what, what's happened here is, um, if you went back six months, we had a uh, team that did business critical systems and a team that did uh, industry standard ISS. Um, now, there's one server organization, and then there's this new converged infrastructure team that's appeared to that, according to data. So that's Mark Potter's that's group, right? right? That's okay. right. That's okay, Mark's so we're putting the puzzle together. Mm -hmm. yep. That's what we do in theCUBE. We takes us years to put the puzzle together <laughs> at HP. <laughs> oh, only kidding. So let's talk about, let's talk about um, the action here at HP Discover. Obviously, uh, the autonomy thing is kind of making its way through the system. All, that, all, the, all the bad stuff that went on is all being cleaned out, and all the goodness is kind of coming in. At HP and Discover in Frankfurt, we talked to a lot of different crews within HP, and it was very, very clear that autonomy had a very positive impact mm. across the board. So that's kind of the big data mojo. You got Vertica as well in the big data side. So how does all that stuff come into a world of firmware, a world of systems programming, a world of where now you have the collision between the the, the converged infrastructure team yeah. and the apps. Yeah. Some call it DevOps, some call it yeah. agile. Well, I don't know, I mean, I think, I, I think one of the things that, um, you know, being on the inside, one of the things that's kind of difficult to do in a company the size of HP sometimes is it seems like we should be able just to, to do everything because we have software folks, we have hardware folks, we make servers, we make, you think with all of that, you ought to be able to, but you know, in a company this size, sometimes it's tricky to, yeah. to get everybody pointing in, in the same direction. Um, and so I think what we're really starting to do now, you know, after we, we kind of thoughtfully ingested uh, some of these acquisitions we did, and you know, you don't want to take an acquisition and just start heading it in a different direction right away or anything. We, we brought these acquisitions in, and they're running and they're doing their thing, but we're now beginning to work on kind of bringing that together. Both the software acquisitions, you know, Vertica, Autonomy, and those things, and kind of making them work more closely together. Uh, and that's this thing we announced that we're talking about called Haven. The Haven, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the other thing that, that we're really starting to think about then is, you know, how does our software uh, really, really exploit hardware? And as we start to do really unique hardware, like Moonshot, um, you know, this is another thing that I've, I've been helping with is, you know, how do you really connect software to hardware at that level? And, you know, Moonshot is such an interesting product in the sense that these cartridges can be so specialized that, you know, you really got the option now to say, what's the, what's the ideal cartridge to do big data, for instance, or to do Vertica or whatever it might be? Um, it's really not a, a parts as parts world like we've been in the last 10 years. So uh, a lot of what we're doing now going forward is not just thinking about how do we bring our software elements together and make them work more closely for a customer, but we're also thinking then about what, what's the optimal hardware configurations to start with, app systems and so on, and eventually even products and SKUs and features that will make these things work really, really well. You get a lot of diversity use cases as well going on, because now you have a variety of different uses for, say, what a big data application is, or what a high performance computing system would look like, or mm -hmm. some data warehouse. Yeah. Where's the data stored? So a lot of multiple dimensions to deal with. And, and then you got open source on top of that. So what is the software approach? How do you guys, you guys play in all those areas, open source? 
um, write your own code. How does that work? Yeah, well, I, I think in the, what you see in Haven is, you know, the H in Haven, of course, is Hadoop. And, um, you know, in the open source world, we, I did a lot of work in the last year kind of looking at, you know, what are the players and who's got momentum and so on. And there's some really, really neat products in the open source world. But there's a few that are really getting critical mass. And clearly Hadoop, uh, it, it, you know, more than just a product, is, is an ecosystem at this point. It has multiple distros behind it. It's got a lot of components, a lot of people adding projects. Um, and so it, it plays a central role in big data just about everywhere. And we integrate that with what we're doing with, with uh, Vertic and with Autonomy in, in the Hadoop offering. Yeah, let's, let's unpack that a little bit more. So the the announcement around Haven involves technologies that have been, you know, uh, pre-existing technologies. So explain to uh, our audience how Haven brings them together into more of a platform versus kind of point products. What, what, are, you, what are you really bringing to the table in terms of Haven, in terms of uh, telling a story around a kind of a unified platform? Uh, and how is that going to allow HP to kind of go forward? What is the, what is the storyline? Yeah. You will. Well, I, I think I think you you step back and you look at what each of these things brings to the table. And clearly, uh, Vertica brings really strong structured analysis. You know, with its columnar structure and so on, it is extremely good at working structured data. Autonomy, extremely good at working with unstructured data, doing feature extraction, classification, those kind of things. Hadoop is typically used as a landing area for data. You know. So you start to see this architecture form up where if we look at the assets we've got, we've got you know, these things that are really good at structured, really good at unstructured. We've got uh, this ecosystem underneath that's kind of become the, the ubiquitous landing zone for a lot of raw data. We've got a really strong connector portfolio when you look across uh, both, uh, both in autonomy and in some of our, store, our security products. We've got a really good strong wealth of connector technology. So um, as we go forward, what we're trying to do is to bring all those things together so that they work more closely. We can connect, we can bring data into the infrastructure, we can we use Vertica to do the, the structure analysis on it. Um, you know, we can use autonomy to do kind of the extraction of interesting features and so on, and, and bring all those pieces to start working together. Now, you know, that is part of the story. The other part is to, to bring together the manageability of all this as well. And that's obviously one of the things I think a lot of our customers are struggling with with the open source stuff is, you know, I, I got to make it work. And, you know, we're kind of moving in this phase where I think open source software has made the leap from, from you know, the, the big internet uh, service providers that have a gaggle of PhDs writing code to, you know, the mainstream retailer in the middle of the country that's kind of going, huh, what do I do with Hadoop, right? And so I, I think we're at this place where manageability is a super key part of this thing. And, and what we're at now is there's lots of islands. Every vendor's got their own little manageability for their piece, but our customers are trying to solve the whole thing. I mean, you look at their situation, they got Hadoop, they got SQL, they got NoSQL, they got key value stores, they got you know something like Vertic for analytics, they got unstructured stuff like autonomy, and, and they gotta manage the whole thing. So coming in the door with, you know, I got the best Hadoop console in the world, doesn't solve the problem. So we're trying to put together uh, something that, that both integrates these guys so the data can flow back and forth between these various products, and then start to bake together the overall manageability and, and all of that you know, is obviously a, a thing that will roll out over some time, uh, but we've begun to announce pieces of it here at the show today. Greg, i got to ask your perspective, because what I love about interviewing with HP guys is that you guys have a different uh, prism to look at through the, through the lens, <laughs> no pun intended, prism. Um, but you have a big customer base, so like you, what, what you guys look at, it was important to you, is different than say a startup like Cloudera or Hortonworks mm -hmm. or even Intel, again, big companies. So you have constituencies, you have customers, you've got to make decisions about from a product optimization standpoint, make the right call. So uh, the question I have for you is, as a, as a technologist and, and, the, and about the future is, where do these startups like Hortonworks and Cloudera go? Because I know, you know they've done some great work, but you know, three and a half, three, four years ago, there was nobody in the market. They were in a greenfield, they had a great clean sheet of paper. Yeah. Now you got IBM, you got HP, NetApp, Intel doing their own distro. So mm -hmm. obviously, you know, can there be a red hat for, for, for Hadoop? Because there's so many different use cases, it's just not clear. What's your take on that? I mean, just, well, you know. You know, I'll tell you, this is a really, so, you know, I wish, it, first of all, if I could predict the future, I yeah. wouldn't be sitting here right now. I'd, my stock would have cashed in. I'd be, yeah. So, but you know, when, it, when I look out and I try to figure out where this is going, I mean, I think, I think there's a couple scenarios that could play out. Um, you know, clearly, uh, we've got a couple of major vendors who, if you, if you just measure in terms, you know, you look at where committers are, um, you can see there's a couple of major vendors that are really kind of driving a lot of that activity right now in the Hadoop space. On the other hand, what I mentioned earlier is Hadoop is an ecosystem, right? And as an ecosystem, new projects start every day. And as a new projects come in and become a part of that Hadoop ecosystem, whether they're formally in it or even informally attached to it, 
there, there's a whole new opportunity for new blood to come into that. So I think one scenario you could certainly say, yeah, maybe somebody ends up being kind of the big dog in this or they get acquired by somebody and become the big dog in this. But, you know, the other one is is that, you know, Hadoop is almost just becoming table stakes. You know, everybody kind of has a distro, um, and a lot of the really interesting differentiation seems to be happening around the edges of Hadoop. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're seeing, like, you know, projects that do... The sandbox parallel, gets bigger, right? Yeah, parallel query optimization is now where a lot of the action is going on, and none of that is in a formal Hadoop project. There's a whole bunch of interesting projects that do parallel query optimization. Uh, you know, what we're doing with Vertica against it, as well as a, a bunch of other projects that are coming at it from different ways, none of those would you say is actually formally a part of, a, of Apache Hadoop. So I think what you see is, you know, at the file system level, at the query optimization level, at the transactional level, at all these different places, we're just going to see the ball keep getting more interesting stuck on it and contributions coming from everywhere. And what we knew is the core of Hadoop, MapReduce, and the file system is almost becoming vanilla in some ways at this point. And a lot of that innovation happens around the edges. Yeah, so it's we hard were, to predict. We were just talking, Jeff and I were talking before we, you, you came on about, you know, uh, comparing, contrasting, you know, when I was a young lad getting into the business, there was standards bodies and, you know, for, you, know you look like you're younger than me, so you, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, remember the standards bodies? IEEE, you know, I, you know, IT, yeah. all these, yeah. you know, these yeah. governing bodies. Now, open source is now the governing body because you have communities managing open source is now mature enough. Yeah. And what's been interesting about Hadoop is that the sandbox was very comfortable for everyone to play in. And it's gotten bigger yeah. and more competitive, the different perspectives. If you're, you know, IBM or HP, parallel yeah. expertise can come in yeah. and different uh, dynamics. So, Well, I'll tell you something. Somebody said to me once years ago, and it really stuck with me. Years ago, I was in, I was in a company that was kind of on the wrong side of the open source or the open movement. Remember the first time around yeah. when proprietary was a dirty word, right? <laughs> And I was on the wrong side of that. And it was a guy I worked with and he said, you know, he said, I'll bet you that if 10 years from now you open up the front page of Computer World, we used to have, you know, folding papers we opened, right? Yeah, yeah. Papers, he said, yeah. you open up First the front that, page. That's of, gone now. Yeah. There's no more Computer World. <laughs> you open it's up the front online. page of Computer World and he says, and, and he said, you're not, are you going to, I bet you what you're going to see is like today, a bunch of people with vendors who all claim their product has really cool, unique features and value that everybody else doesn't have. We're not going to get to a place where everything is the same, right? So that's what you're seeing now in Hadoop. Yeah, it is open. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's a community. But if we're going to make money, every vendor is trying to find a way to make theirs a little differentiated. And differentiation is something that's always going to happen, right? So and you got to differentiate. And 10 years from now, when you say, who's going to be on the queue, right, Jeff? Well, that'll be, yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> question. So uh, from HP's perspective, how do you keep up with all that innovation? and make sure that you can leverage those different projects yeah. and different uh, you know, really cool innovations that are happening in the open source world and do it in a way that allows your customers the flexibility to you know, use the technology that's most useful to them. I think we got two things that, that we do. One, it, one is focus, right? You, you don't try to drive lots of innovation into something that's already got critical mass that's working and solving a problem. You know, if you really can add differentiation, like we can do with Vertica, for instance, mm -hmm. we got something there that's really unique or what we can do with autonomy, um, you know, yeah, there are other products out there that do query processing or unstructured feature analysis or any of those kind of things, but we have unique differentiation. If we're going to focus on that, we're not going to focus on trying to do everything at once, right? So I think, you know, focus is a big part of, of what we do here that makes it work. The other thing we got is that, you know, HP is one of the, the probably the few major companies left that I, I believe that truly knows how to partner. I mean, we, we don't compete with a lot of our partners, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we have a good relationship with our partners. And I think that's one of the things we can really leverage here is, you know, we work with Hortonworks, we work with Cloudera, we work with Campbar, we, we work with all these vendors at different levels. And we're good at that. And we have, you know, my team that I've just joined, I mean, I got hundreds of engineers that just work on partner relationships. I mean, engineers, we're not talking a bunch of marketing guys, but guys that load stuff on servers and figure out how it works and tune it and optimize it and make the hardware work and work with it. And some of these partners, they don't have those kind of resources. Most of this code that we're talking about, all this open source stuff, it's all developed on two socket servers because that's what people can afford, right? And we always ask the question, is that really the knee of the curve? So, you know, do you really, and you go to the shop and you say, do you have a place somewhere where you have 100 servers lined up that you can test on? You know, well, I got a customer that once in a while lets me, you know, okay. We can do that. Yeah, we were just talking yesterday, riffing about like, you know, processors in Moore's Law and cubes, three-dimensional cube processors, you know, mm -hmm. thousands of cores. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the world will change and, 
And yeah. with that, I want to ask about the HP Labs project. We interviewed Martin Fink here on theCUBE in the past, and, and you, you mentioned you've been involved in tectonic shifts. How does all that come together? Because you know, that's kind of out on the lunatic fringe in a good way, and bringing that back into mainstream, it's, it's got a little applied R&D, but now you got to bring in and commercialize it. You're part of that team that's going to commercialize the software. You know, how does that play in? You got Moonshot, which is very disruptive on a, from a footprint and capability standpoint. Mm -hmm. You got tectonic shifts. How, quickly describe how that all fits in there. Okay, quickly. That's the symbol for quickly. I know. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I think that's so, our break symbol. We're, we're bunching on time, but we want to have this conversation. <laughs> so, I, I, quickly, I guess what I'd say is that um, one of the things that we bake into this, and as we think about, okay, all these different partnerships we talked about and what we're doing with our own software, is now you got to look at where platforms are going, and and that's what Tectonic Shifts is about. Is it says, what are you targeting in the future? A great example is Memristor. When we're doing Memristor with NVRAM, you know, this is not just faster storage. Right, I mean, this this is a, a different paradigm. So we built software to it. The fundamental definition of a database change is, I'm a database guy, so I'll give you a great example. We used to take a transaction, and a transaction involved this dance you do between writing things into memory and writing things to disk, mm -hmm. and trying to make it go fast, yet be safe and durable all at the same time. Now with persistent memory, when you write a transaction to memory, you're done. The definition of a transaction just changed. So that means what we've got to do is we have to have projects like what Martin's doing that says, let me start to build and prototype that actual environment, that platform that all this software we just talked about is going to run on so we can get it working right. Well, database guys are in hot demand and you got Flash now, we just talked to Donatelli, that's going to change the game on persistent store. Mm -hmm. Addressability is now going to be flipping around. It used to be storage, used to make up for the inefficiencies of RAM, mm -hmm. now you have it's memory going to make up the inefficiencies of storage and it's all growing very rapidly. So certainly the software is driving everything. It's eating the world as Mark Andreessen said uh, in the Wall Street Journal many months ago and certainly software-led infrastructure here. Uh, thanks for coming on, great, really appreciate it. We'll be right back with Antonio Neri, Senior Vice President, going to talk with us and give the update on what's happening in his world here at HP Discover. This is SiliconANGLE, uh, The Cube. We'll be right back. Come on the cube, baby. Rock and roll. Well, I think it's probably five or six times I've been on the cube now. Right, and, you know, at first, the guys are just fun to work with. Pat, welcome back. Hey, always a pleasure to be in the cube. Hey, I'm about to go on the cube. You never know what's going to happen. I'm, uh, a three-time veteran of being on the Cube. Uh, I hope many, many more. Chad Sackets, Chad, welcome to the Cube. Dave, John, it's great to be here, man. I keep coming back because uh, great, insightful questions from uh, from uh, John and from Dave. What face-melting action have you seen here at the event? And I know there's a lot of it. It's a great vehicle to uh, to communicate with a broad audience. A lot of folks watch. Great to have you back. Good job. All right, Craig Nunez. Uh, VP of Marketing at HP Storage. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Yeah. When people mention theCUBE, they, they're like, oh my God, I saw you on theCUBE. And they're all excited about it. It's, it's, a, it's an experience. It's not just information. They experience kind of what's going on there. It's like real time. It's like they were there. That was like my going to the pleasure. gym. Boom, boom. Legendary IBMer, CEO of Symantec, and now CEO of Virtual Instrument. Uh, great to have you on the Cube. So for Cube to be here at a conference like this that's got 15, 20,000 people and sharing that live around the world, that's consistent with the way the, the world is evolving. So it's a wonderful meeting, wonderful meeting. John and Dave are amazing. I don't know how they keep everything in their heads the way they do. Uh, it's a great format and we're obviously seeing that this notion of real-time coverage and a real conversation is what's driving us as a company. And I, I said very seriously, when the questions and the comments that we hear from from them and from all the different guests here directly turn into the products that we build. Yeah, that was my first Cube and uh, I really enjoyed it. There was the oh, rapid fire of questions. It made me think on my feet, but they were very thought provoking and really got me going on analyzing the, the greatness of Arista and the greatness of the Cube as well. John and Dave, the reason their approach works, they're not just guys you know, reading down the question list, right? Okay, next one, next one. They're, they're, it's a conversation, right? And it's, you know, they're going to challenge you. They're not going to settle for the, the marketing hype and the BS and all that stuff that the industry throws around. Come on, you got to hit them up on the HP question.